The basis for all construction or fabrication math boils down to being able to read the tape measure efficiently. And if you've never done that before, or if you have very little experience doing that, then that task can seem a little bit daunting. As an example, we have a standard Stanley 30 foot tape measure here. And though the inches are clearly marked out in bold black letters and the foot marks are marked out, it uh, they don't mark anything in between the inch marks to denote the fractional inches. Now, that can be a little bit confusing if you've never worked with a tape measure before. Now, they do have tape measures that have more of a, they're more of a teaching aid. They uh, do list out some of those fractional inches. This particular Stanley goes down to the eighth of an inch, and you'll find these from a lot of different manufacturers. Then you'll have tape measures like the Stanley 12 foot that actually for the first foot of this tape measure, instead of being in the 16th of an inch uh, per it, between the inch marks, it actually goes down to 30 seconds of an inch. So that can be even more confusing. Well, my goal here is that by the end of this video, you'll have a lot better understanding of how to read just your more standardized tape measure. I'll show you a couple ways where you can read a little bit faster and give you the basis for learning how to read a tape measure. So before we go too far, let's take a look at some of the features within a standard tape measure. So first of all, I use a Stanley Powerlock 30 foot. There are other tape measures that are gonna have better standout. Now that standout is the length that you can extend the blade without it breaking over on you. Uh, they're gonna have a lot wider blade. I choose a Stanley uh, because first of all, those extra features are gonna cost extra money and the weight savings that I get with a standard 30 foot tape measure from Stanley is really the tipping point for me. Now, if you do like some of those other features, they have tape measures that have uh, the fractional inches listed out. They have tape measures that are wider with better standout. They have tape measures with very uh, wide hooks so that you can hook in various different orientations and locations. They have even some that are night vision. So there's a lot of different features within a lot of different tape measures. Now, with every tape measure, in the middle, at the very front, you're gonna find the length of the tape and you're gonna find the manufacturer that's listed on each of the tape measures. Now, when it comes to the hook, uh, this particular hook is a three rivet. That's a sign of a really good tape measure is when they have a triple rivet for their hook. You'll have some lesser quality tapes that are gonna have a double rivet. Those are going to wear out a lot quicker than what you'll find with the triple rivet. You also notice that the hook moves in and out and that is by design. So what that allows you to do is when you are measuring to the inside of an object, that hook will push in exactly the width of the hook, allowing you to get an accurate measure from the inside of what you're measuring to whatever length. And consequently, if you are hooking on the outside of an object, it allows that hook to move outward exactly the width of the tape so that you are measuring accurately from the inside of the hook to whatever you are measuring. So those are some uh, features that you're going to find in every good quality tape measure. Now with the standard Stanley, you'll notice that the inch marks start out in black and they continue all the way up the tape measure. Uh, once they get to the one foot mark, then they go down to the bottom, but they'll continue all the way up to give you the counts of inches uh, throughout the entire tape measure. Then at every one foot mark, you will notice that they are denoted with black arrow. So one foot, two foot, and all the way up the tape measure. Another feature that they have is at the one foot breaks, apart from the inches continuing on on the bottom, they also list the inches in red starting over at every foot mark. So what this allows you to do is to very quickly, instead of reading something out as inches, for an example, 19 inches, instead of saying 19 inches, we would say it's one foot seven. And that gives you a quick visual reference to know uh, how to call them out in feet. Also, we have at every 16 inches, you're going to have a red box for the 16 inch marks. Now, those are standard uh, stud placements for the U.S. So you'll have them at 16 and 32 and then 48 at 16 inch intervals all the way up the tape. A lesser known feature to most tape measures is going to be the little black diamond. Now, the little black diamond uh, is just it, the very first one is right above 19 and 3 sixteenths. It's actually 19.2 inches. What that is for is for floor joist uh, placements. So it allows you, instead of uh, the 16 inch would be your standard eight foot material. And that's what most stuff in the US is gonna come in like plywood, you have it in four by eight sheets. Uh, that is divided the eight foot into six different uh, 
six equal measurements. By going to the 19.2, that's dividing an eight foot sheet into five different, uh, uh, divided by five will get you 19.2 inches. So as you go up the tape, those will be marked out at every 19.2 inches, thereby saving you a truss. Well, let's get into the inch scale uh, so that we can better learn how to read this tape measure quickly. So I have a blown up one inch scale here to better illustrate this. Now, if we take the one inch and then we cut that measurement in half, what we end up with is the half inch mark. Now you can think of this the same way that liquid measurements in the US are taken as well. So let's just say as an example that the one inch represents one gallon. If you cut the gallon into two parts, that becomes two half gallons. So one half gallon plus a second half gallon equals the full gallon. Consequently, the same thing is true of the one or the half inch mark. So this would be half of the full inch. That's one half. Then if we take those measurements and we cut that in half, what we end up with is the quarter scale. So this would become one fourth. This is two fourths, but reduces down to one half. This is three fourths and finally four fourths, which is one inch. So this would be taking those two half gallons and cutting them in half to give you four quarts. So it would be one, two, three, and four quarts to make up the full gallon. Then if we were to cut each one of those measurements in half again, what we end up with is the eighth inch scale. So this will be one eighth, two eighths, which reduces to one quarter, three eighths, four eighths, which will reduce all the way down to one half inch, five eighths, 6 eighths, which reduces down to 3 quarter, 7 eighths, and finally 8 eighths, or 1 inch. So that would be the same thing as saying that these are pints. So it would be 8 pints that make up the gallon. And if we were to cut each one of those measurements in half again, finally we'll get to our 1 16th measurement. So this will cut the inch up into 16 different parts. It's equivalent to saying that 16 cups make a full gallon. So this would be 1 16th. 2 sixteenths, which reduces, 3 sixteenths, 4 sixteenths, which also reduces, 5 sixteenths, and so on and so forth all the way up until you get to the one inch mark. So you can think of this the same way that you think of it uh, with volumetric liquid volume measurements in standard U.S. gallon. It's essentially the same thing where you're taking half of something and then you're cutting that half in half and then you're taking that portion and cutting it in half and then in half again on up down the line. So we'll go ahead and finish this out. This would be 10 sixteenths, 11 sixteenths, 12 sixteenths, 13, 14, oop, and finally 15 sixteenths. So again, you'll notice that with the with all these different measurements, especially the half, the quarters, and the eighths, those will all, you can count them as like five eighths. You can count that as 10 sixteenths because it would be 10 marks of 16, or you reduce that down to five eighths of an inch. It's the same thing with half inch and with all the other measurements. So uh, one way that I used to train myself when I was really young on how to read the tape measure quicker is to know the equivalent. So for an example, if I was reading something that was 11 sixteenths of an inch, well, the, the nearest larger mark to those is gonna be the three quarter mark, which is pretty, for me, it was pretty evident uh, to split this up into quarters. Very quickly, I could determine where the quarter marks were. Now, by knowing that three quarters is the same thing as 12 sixteenths, then I could take off one sixteenth and that would give me 11 sixteenths. And so that's a way that I learned to read the tape measure when I was younger, uh, a way that I learned to read it faster. Consequently, if you have a uh, one inch, which is the same thing as 16 sixteenths, if you by taking off one sixteenth, you very quickly know that that is 15 sixteenths. So this is the way that I kind of train myself to learn the tape measure a little bit quicker, especially knowing the equivalent fractions for the quarter marks, the half marks, and the three quarter marks. Now let's take a look at some different things that we're going to measure and see if you can determine what the measurement actually is. 
So here I have a bottle or a can of WD-40 Specialist Lubricant. This is white lithium grease. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure the bottom of the can. So we'll hook onto that and get our measurement there. Now the way I know this is, again, I go to two and a half inches. Then I know that we're going down to the lowest marks. They're going to be in the 16th scale. So I go from 8 sixteenths to 9 sixteenths. And very quickly I know that that is 2 and 9 sixteenths of an inch. Now I have a little case for, or a little package of Milwaukee Inks All markers, and we're going to measure the packaging itself. So we'll put our tape measure up there, and you can very quickly determine that because it's just above 7 inches, but it is in the smallest ticks, or the smallest marks, we know that that is in the 1 16th scale. So very quickly we can determine that that is 7 and 1 16th. Now if we turn it sideways, now we know by looking at the lengths of the marks, we know that we're on the second longest mark. So we know that's in the quarter scale. And very quickly, we can determine that that is two and three quarters of an inch. Now we're going to measure the length of a standard rafter square. And if we set that up there, I'll give you just a second to take a look at that. We know that that is one tick above the quarter inch mark or the second longest marks in that inch scale. So to put the quarter mark into sixteenths, that would be the same thing as saying one quarter is equivalent to four sixteenths. And then we just add one to that, making it five sixteenths. So that would be seven and five sixteenths. So if you're still having trouble reading the standardized tape measure, a good learning tools are these tape measures that have the fractions broke up into the eighth inch increments. They don't break up the sixteenth. Uh, but that would be a lot of written information on the tape and it gets a little bit confusing to read all that. So I particularly like this style of tape uh, with the fractions only on one side and the opposite side does not have them. So if you're paying attention and you're wanting to learn how to read the tape more effectively, these are great teaching aids because it allows you to quickly get your measurements, but then you can look across to the other side and through muscle memory, you'll really start to learn where the longest tick mark is going to be your half inch, and the next longest is your quarter inch marks, then the next longest your eighth inch marks, and finally your sixteenth inch marks. And over time, it will become easier and easier and easier. Just like anything else, the more you practice it, the easier it becomes. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I'll see you in the next one.